Christianity is often uh, described as the enemy of science, but there's another story to be told here. And I want to go back uh, to the ancient world and talk about what kind of science existed in ancient Greece and ancient Rome. Well, what we call science now, um, the concept of it certainly began with the Greeks. And I mean by the concept of it, the belief that there was um, an objective, um, natural, true description of reality. The important thing about Greek science is that it was taken for granted that that was the case. Uh, nature as a whole, everything that was, was rational, according to the Greek philosophers. This was a great novelty in the history of culture, a great achievement of the human mind to uh, determine uh, the mind itself was the key to all truth. And so the whole universe, according to the Greeks, was itself rational, governed by reason. It therefore was changeless, it couldn't change. It was perfect, it was beautiful, um, it was eternal. And therefore could be understood through rational thought. It could be understood by definitions, that's right. And the great contribution to, of Greek science was classification um, and definition. But it was all done on the basis of the axioms I've stated, that um, the whole thing was fixed forever on the principle of rationality and therefore you simply had to define, 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 above all by comparison. You compared things with things and explained it on the basis of analogy all the time. Many of the analogies were simply false. Um, the biblical worldview, or let, let's say the Hebrew view of the created world was different. Is that correct? Oh yes. The Hebrew view of the created world has some things in common. The, the Hebrew culture loved the creative world and gloried in it, but on an entirely different um, um, basis of knowledge. Um, it was taken for granted. It is the fundamental thing. The fundamental difference is that the world is not permanent. It is not changeless. It moves on from one thing to another. It began. Above all, it was made by God. And so it is the handiwork of God himself that one glories in, in loving the world. And above all, from the practical point of view, it is changing. So it's more like um, a work of art in the Hebrew thought rather than like a rational principle. Certainly, it, 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 is, it is a personal thing. God is conceived of in personal terms. And God sends the rain and shakes the earth and rules the seas and so on. It is all understood uh, uh, in what you might call a very human way. Can we talk about the development of what we call modern science, empirical science? Um, some would argue that it really was just uh, an evolutionary development of Greek science. Um, but others argue, and I think you would, that, that the biblical worldview had a role in the development of empirical science. Empirical science was rejected by the Greek naturalistic tradition. People experimented um, with, with the um, empirical view, uh, but rejected it. Above all, Galen, the great medical philosopher who transmitted not just medicine, but the whole corpus of ancient scientific knowledge uh, through to modern times, rejected empiricism, which he had had experience of, and he rejected it because it was illogical. And he criticised Moses himself for That's this right. view, didn't he? Moses and, and Christ, he said, were fine people, uh, but they did not use logic. Instead, um, they appealed to experience. Experiment, you see, is the test of experience. Truth lies in your experience. And it, not that the experience makes it true, but you can test for truth by the empirical method to find out if in fact it's the case. This was illogical 
uh, according to Galen and, and the bulk of the Greek philosophical tradition, and therefore rejected. But it's central to our modern concept of science, so where did it come from? It comes solely from the biblical view of creation, because the, the created order is a, if you like, a temporary phenomenon. That is, it's bound by time, it begins, it will end, it changes, and above all, it's the handiwork of God and therefore it can be picked to bits to some extent and people can find out how it works and especially it can be tested. The, the biblical books are full of the testing approach to things. God tests people and people put God to the test. This is the empirical method. You test for truth to see whether it's really the case and it comes out of the Bible, the empirical method, the validation of the empirical method comes from the doctrine of creation.